Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear friends. As you know, uh, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I keep coming back to the prophecies of Daniel chapter 11 and what it has to do with the future Islamic caliphate to come, as well as the Dajjal and the king of the north and the, the beast. These are all terms for the same uh, arch enemy of the people of God who tries to make his capital Jerusalem one more time before the return of Yeshua HaMashiach, Isa Amasi at the end of days. And uh, so I want to talk a little bit more. I've kind of touched on the theme of a, a Jewish alliance with Rome and uh, talked about that in history from the time of the Maccabees. And you can find that video on, on my channel. Um, but now I want to talk about, even before that, the the history, right? We like to say history repeats itself. I want to talk to you about something that happened in history between a king of the north and a king of the south that happened even before the time of Daniel the prophet. And I want to discuss the actions of the Jews at that time and how maybe those similar actions may happen again at the end of time. So let's go to the book of 2 Chronicles. This is in the Hebrew Tanakh. Now, Chronicles is thought to have been compiled by Ezra the scribe, um, basically from older sources. He, uh, you know, at the time of the captivity and the burning and ransacking of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, I'm sure a lot of the, the knowledge, the libraries were lost, were burnt, the scrolls were burnt, um, but they had uh, pieces I'm sure, that were preserved and saved, especially the most important ones like the Torah. Um, but other books, you know, the Chronicles of the Kings and stuff, I'm sure a lot of information was lost. Um, but what was saved, I believe, Ezra compiled into the books of First and Second Chronicles and then wrote his own book called Ezra. Um, so let's go to Ezra chapter 35, sorry, <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 35. And let's read about the King Josiah. Now, the King Josiah was really kind of the last good king of Judah, uh, descendant of King David. And uh, he kind of renovated and, and rebuilt and restored true worship and at the temple, um, took out a lot of the altars of, to pagan gods and um, kept the Passover there in the temple, something that hadn't been done in years. He did all that during his reign. They found the Torah during his reign, uh, kind of been put aside in the, um, in the temple, gathering dust, you know, and through the times of the wicked kings of Judah. But he really instituted a revival and brought people back to the law of God. Um, but what I want to read to you in Second Chronicles 35, starting with, Verse 20, it was after all this. That's, that's how this verse starts out. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish by the Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. But he sent messengers to him, saying, What have I to do with you, king of Judah? I have not come against you this day, but against the house with which I have war. For God commanded me to make haste, Refrain from meddling with God who is with me, lest he destroy you. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself so that he might fight with him. And he did not heed the words of Necho from the mouth of God. So he came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. Now, very, very interesting here that Josiah, he was a righteous king, but he failed to recognize the word of God spoken through the Pharaoh of Egypt. And yes, God can speak through anyone, right? And in this case, uh, the Pharaoh of Egypt, Pharaoh Necho, uh, the Assyrian Empire was on the decline, the Babylon Babylonian Empire was on the rise, and there was a bit of a power vacuum at this time. And so what we see is we see Necho moving up through Judea, kind of a, a weakened state, you know, had fallen a long way from the times of David and Solomon. Um, through successive wicked kings and the, the blessings of God had kind of been slowly withdrawn. So Nico marches through their territory up to um, up towards Carchemish to meet the Babylonian army. And the king of Judah opposes him. Now I have this question for you. 
Babylon. Technically, it's to the east of Jerusalem, but we have what's called the Fertile Crescent. And so to take an army from Babylon to Carchemish or even down to Jerusalem or down to Egypt, you would have to come north from Babylon, north up to Carchemish, and then turn south and go down to Jerusalem because everything between Babylon and Jerusalem, Iraq, and that's all desert. You can't take an army through there. There's just not enough water and food uh, to, for the, the horses, the men. So you have to go up and then come down from the north. So when we talk about the kings of north and south in the book of Daniel then, which is written after these events took place, Babylon is considered the king of the north because the armies come down from the north to attack Jerusalem. And um, the king of the south would be Egypt because the armies follow the Mediterranean coastline, come up from the south to attack Jerusalem. But in this case, the battle was not between the king of the south and Jerusalem. It wasn't supposed to be, at least. It was supposed to be between the king of the south and the king of the north, Babylon. But Judah, the king of Judah, Josiah, got in the way and attacked the king of the south. How very interesting. Because at the time of the end, in Daniel 11, verse 40 through 45, what we find is the king of the south again in the future attacks the king of the north. And the question has to be asked, on which side will Judah, modern nation state of Israel, ally itself? Will it ally itself on the side of the king of the south? Now we know from the prophecy of Daniel that the king of the south, who was Egypt at the time of King Josiah, who was Egypt at the time of the Arab Crusades in Daniel 11, um, prior to verse 29, who was the Ottoman Turks and Islamic Caliphate at the time of Daniel 11, 29, and who I believe will still be Islamic in the future when the king of the north again attacks Egypt in Daniel 11, 40 through 45. So the king of the south, I believe, is Islamic or Egyptian. And the king of the north is Babylon. And when we go to the book of Revelation, who is Babylon? It's the Roman Empire that has continued down from pagan Rome to papal Rome through apostate Christianity. Where do we see the false messiah arise? The deceiver. We see the beast. That's out of apostate Christianity. That's the king of the north. So we have kind of this picture in the times of the days of King Josiah, where the Jews align with the king of the north. And what do we see today? Well, we see the modern nation state of Israel, the political entity of Israel. I'm not talking about every Israeli. I don't want you to get the idea that I'm somehow racist against all Jews. I'm not. But I can tell you that the politics of Israel today are not aligned with the king of the south. It's aligned with the king of the north, which is Babylon. And here's the warning I have for my Jewish brothers and sisters on the other side of the Jordan. Um, what happened? What happened after the days of King Josiah? Well, Veronico and goes off to Archimish, loses that fight, and goes back to Egypt, and there's a power struggle, power vacuum there for another about 20 years, actually. We had two sons of Josiah, uh, who each reigned for 11 years. One was put in place by Pharaoh Necho, so he comes back from that fight, and in place as a king of Judah, kind of a puppet, puppet king, he rebels against Egypt, sides with Babylon for a time, uh, and so... But then he revolts against Babylon. Babylon comes in and um, appoints a new, different son of Josiah to be king. And over time, he also rebels against Babylon. Babylon comes back, and eventually the end of the story is Babylon conquers Jerusalem. Burns it with fire and takes its princes and its people into exile in Babylon. And what do we see in Daniel 11, 40 through 45? Well, we see the exact same thing, right? We see a battle between the king of the north and the king of the south, just like we did in the days of Josiah. And 
The king of the north wins the battle eventually. I mean, the Babylonian Empire became the dominant empire of its day, not Egypt at that time. And in the future, the king of the north as well overwhelms many countries. The whole world marvels after the beast, if you were to use the terms and the, the phraseology from the book of Revelation. And eventually, in Daniel 11, 40-45, what we find is that that king of the north plants the tents of his palace between the seas at the glorious holiest mountain, the glorious holy mountain. So between the seas, the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea at the glorious holy mountain, that's Jerusalem, friends. So what we see again, Israel needs to be careful. Don't align with the king of the north. It's not a good policy. History repeats itself, right? What happened? They, they attacked Egypt and Egypt is representative of the brothers, right? Because today, Egypt is Islam. And Islam is the sons of Ishmael. That's the brothers. Stop having a family fight, right? That's what all this is about. Stop having a family fight. The king of the south, Islam, is the brother of Yehuda. And they should be natural allies, but they're not. They're fighting. They're fighting over a little strip of land. And they need to stop because... The, the absolute worst thing to do is to ally with the king of the north. Because that king of the north, well, eventually, he, he doesn't care about the alliance. He's going to come to Jerusalem. He cares about world domination. He's going to go conquer Jerusalem just like the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, did not that long after King Josiah went against the king of the south. So, something to think about. Um, you know, it's prophecy. Uh, we don't know exactly how it will all play out. We don't know how history will repeat itself in the future, but we have these prophecies. And they're built off of people who live near the time when this history was being written. They know what happened, and they saw what was going to happen in the future, and they wrote it down for us. And so I thank God that we still have these scriptures to guide us. And may uh, the Creator... Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Yahweh um, guide us to all truth along the straight path and ultimately is my prayer that um, we stop thinking about who we're going to support who we're going to ally with here on earth you know are we going to ally with this nation or that nation and we come together as a community and we ally with Yeshua HaMashiach Isa HaMasi because he is coming very very soon and he will bring with him a kingdom of peace. He will slay the deceiver and the beast, the Dajjal, and set up a kingdom that will last forever. It will be a kingdom of peace. He is the prince of peace. And may his peace be with you. Salam and shalom.